Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hi guys, welcome to another Mules of tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn about the different types of flows in Mule 4. So there are three main types of flows in Mule 4. They are synchronous flows, subflow, and an asynchronous flow. So a synchronous flow, as the name suggests, processes all the components in a sequential manner. Whereas an asynchronous flow will send a particular mule event to two different components and a subflow is used to group together a set of components to perform a predefined operation. Let's get started and design the three different types of flows and see the scope of each. So first thing we'll design is a synchronous flow. We'll call this as synchronous. A synchronous flow has two sections, a source section and a process section. So a source section is where you put in a trigger such as an HTTP listener. And the process section will add a payload. Next, we'll transform this payload so that it is readable by the browser. The last thing we'll add in a synchronous flow is a logger. Let's configure each of these components. So we've created a payload containing two objects. Let's transform this into a more readable format for the browser so that we can view our output. So we'll just do this and our logger will log the payload of our synchronous flow. So this is what a synchronous flow looks like basically once you hit the sync endpoint on the local host this flow will be triggered the mule event will then travel from the listener to the payload and to the transform message and finally to the logger and back to the server again let us now design a subflow and see what it does so a subflow is basically a group of components which is used to perform a predefined operation so look for subflow Subflow 1. We'll use a subflow to extract the name of each model from our payload that we've created in our main flow. And another thing to note about subflows is that as you can see there is no source section. There's only a process section in subflows. So a subflow has to be called from another flow. And that flow is called the calling flow. So a synchronous flow is going to be the calling flow for our subflow 1. So let's populate this with components. We'll only be using one component in our subflow that is transform message and we'll just extract the models of our payload. In order for the subflow to work, it should be called from a calling flow. So our synchronous flow will be the calling flow and we need to add a flow reference component in the calling flow. So that we are able to call our subflow. In the flow name, give the name of the flow that you want to call. So in our case, it's SF1. So that is it for subflow. Now let's design an asynchronous flow. So an asynchronous flow starts out as a normal flow. So we'll put a flow component here and the source section will put a listener. So the main difference between an asynchronous flow and a synchronous flow is an asynchronous scope. Look for async and drag and drop it right here. So before the asynchronous scope we'll add a payload. 
we'll copy the same payload from our synchronous flow and in the async scope we'll populate a transform message let's use the same transform message that we used in our subflow After the transform message, we'll add a logger that will log our payload. After the async scope, let's add another transform message. This will basically just convert the payload into JSON format. Lastly, let's add another logger that will again log the payload. Let's configure our listener. So here we've designed an asynchronous flow. What happens in an asynchronous flow is the mule event will be sent to the async scope as well as to the first component after the async scope. So here a payload will be sent both to the transform message here as well as to this transform message. And another thing to note about the async scope is that it does not return anything. So the event will go from set payload to transform message to logger and then stop here. It won't return anything back to the server or back to the flow. Whereas this route from set payload to transform message to logger will return back to the server. Let's deploy the app and see how these three flows work in practice. So I've gotten rid of the flow reference component that we had placed here. It's just so that we can first look at the output that our synchronous flow provides and then we'll add the flow reference component and see how our flow performs with the subflow component in it. So let's hit the endpoint for our synchronous flow first and see what it returns. As we can see here, it returns an array of the two objects that we created with the two phone models. Now let's add in the flow reference component and see what difference it makes. Save the application and wait for it to redeploy. And as we can see here in our console, logger from our synchronous flow has captured the payload and is displaying it in the console. Now that our app has been redeployed, let's see how the synchronous flow endpoint performs with the subflow being referenced in it. So as we can see here, we have a completely different output which gives us only the name of the models as we had defined in the transform message of the subflow. And again, the logger has only captured the name of the models, which is iPhone 11 and Galaxy S10 from the payload. Now let's hit the endpoint for our asynchronous flow. Here we can see that our async endpoint basically returns the payload that we had set before the asynchronous scope. Here. and this transform message which basically extracts the name of the models has no effect on the eventual output of our asynchronous flow. So mule event basically travels in parallel from the set payload component to the async scope as well as to the transform message. And if we look at the console, we can see two logger files. So this logger information is basically from this logger whereas this information is from this logger. So the asynchronous scope can be used for many applications which 
you do not need information to be returned to the server so maybe like writing data to a file appending data to a database we can use an asynchronous scope for such kind of applications now that we've seen the how the three different types of flows work another thing to note is that a synchronous flow has its own error handling component as you can see here whereas a subflow depends on the calling flow which is the synchronous flow in this case for its error handling so any errors raised in subflow 1 will be handled by the error handler of our synchronous flow whereas for the asynchronous flow any error raised in the async scope will be handled by the error handling component of our asynchronous flow but if we were to add a flow reference component here and place our synchronous flow as the flow reference then in this case our asynchronous scope would have an error handling of its own which is basically the error handler for our synchronous flow so in this way we can see that an asynchronous flow or asynchronous scope can have an error handling of its own or it can depend on the main flow for its error handling so that is it for the different types of flows in mule 4 each of these flows perform different functions and are useful in their own ways